This is going to be a long time to read it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll get the few couple sentences and then we'll pause until it's my turn. Okay. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to their separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, all people, and women are created, sorry, I meant men, women, or women, men, are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And for the support of this declaration, and with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. Signed, Josiah Bartlett, William Whipple, Matthew Thornton, all from New Hampshire. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How good it is to hear those words read aloud again. My name is James Madison, though some might call me the father of the Constitution. I know well that those founding documents are a republic with the work of many minds, not merely one. When we built the new nation, America, we, we created a government that was inexplicably bound people together, one that magnified our virtues and shone a light upon our weaknesses. For as I once asked long ago, what is government itself but the greatest, greatest of all reflections on human nature? Since then, the two sides of our humanity, our better nature and our baser instincts, have been struggling for control over control of ourselves and our country. This fight, started by my revolutionary brothers and sisters, continues to this very day. I am proud to come here today with heroes, ordinary citizens, who have put themselves at risk to make this country all that it can be. As citizens of the, this republic, we are bound together Whichever way we pull, the country follows. In every generation, ordinary citizens have made incredible efforts to pull our country towards its best possible nature. Today, these people are here to tell you their stories. Good day to you all. Thank you. Good day to you all. <clears throat> My name is Abigail Adams, and I am a wife, and I am a mother. I am an ardent abolitionist, and I am First Lady of the United States of America. I'm Doug Hughes, and I used to be a mailman. Actually, today I was officially let go uh, for trying to deliver a letter. My name is Doris <laughs> Haddock. <laughs> You can call me Granny D. I used to work in a shoe factory, but now I am retired. You've probably heard our names before, not for what we did as individuals, but for what we did as citizens. You've heard of us because sometimes in our lives, each one of us took a stand that changed the course of this country. And even though we live centuries apart, we all fought the same battle. Throughout history, we've all fought the same battle, the battle between our better nature and our baser instinct. 
<laughs> Who are you calling a baser instinct? I'm Greed, and I'm part of each and every one of you out there, and don't let any of these do-gooders tell you any different. <laughs> well said, my boy. My name is Hopelessness, and I, too, am part of human nature. I, too, am part of human nature. Um. <laughs> Look here. Look here. Thank you. Uh, Look here, you're all just normal people, and corruption has been with us since the dawn of time. You can't fight it, so why don't you all just go back home? <laughs> now, come out now and introduce yourself, Apathy. What he said, I mean, I'm Apathy, and I actually think there's probably a lot of stuff in the world that's not right and should be fixed by someone, but it's, it's so hard to come up with solutions and so easy to complain, and I'm... I'm just tired, you know, and I, I just got this great game that keeps me super busy, so I'm, I'm going to go back to doing that. <laughs> it's true that these baser instincts are within all of us, and during our time, we each saw humanity giving in to these base instincts. We saw a version of humanity that was only functioning at its lowest potential. We saw a colony of people deny their freedoms. We saw women and people of color systematically oppressed. Still are. We saw a government that turn its back on people to pledge allegiance to the highest bidder. But despite this darkness, we also saw a light in the best potential of people around us. We saw the belief in an independent representative system of self-government free from tyranny. We saw resilience in the face of brutality and strength and compassion in the face of hatred. We saw the belief in an independent representative system of self-government, free of corruption. And we saw people, incredible, inspirational people, who refused to give up on our highest ideals for humanity, even when the deck was stacked against us. And boy, was the deck stacked against us. The British Empire was the largest ever known to the world, with the strongest military. Racial and gender discrimination was codified in the Constitution, enshrined in law, and supported by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Our government was bought and paid for with the very same people we entrusted to guard our political systems were writing laws with their left hand and cashing checks with their right. Everyone told us it was pointless to fight back. Has anyone ever told you to give up on something that you care about? Did you listen or did you keep trying? Who can tell us of a time when you persevered and showed the skeptics? Raise your hand. When did you persevere and you fought against the skeptics? Well, I've had the good fortune to be working with this organization uh, that was started about 15 years ago here in New Hampshire and we have kept on it with Dan Weeks with many of you here uh, it all started back uh, as many things do with a small group of people and and we never should give up that hope but that's where it all started you're here yeah thank you yes can someone else tell me of a time that you persevered raise your hand Yes. Come on up. <laughs> you. A Hampton Walker. Yes. Um, many people have told me that I couldn't be in the arts and that in order to live in life, you had to sell your soul. And that's just simply not true. And even though there's been plenty of struggles and it's not over, I still have my soul. <laughs> Come on up. 
suppose I should take the hat off because I wasn't wearing the hat. But in the uh, state senate, it used to be the case in New Hampshire that one could legally discriminate based on perceived sexual orientation. We fought against some tough odds. This was back in the 1990s. And uh, a lot of people worked together. It took more than one try, but we did it. And we ended what had been legal discrimination. And that was a good start. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, I've had my chair of skeptics too. People told me I'd never make it across the whole country, but I just couldn't sit back and let a country that I love go down such a wrong track. I could not live one more moment without political freedom. I couldn't stand to see whole classes of citizens ignored. I was tired of feeling powerless, of writing letters to my own representatives and to my local paper and never being heard. Yes, me too. I had this issue I knew was important, and I tried to talk to my representatives, and they just ignored me. Well, I wasn't going to take that, and I was tired of people telling me that I couldn't make a difference. I was 88 years old. I wasn't dead. I knew I had to spend my remaining years making a difference, or I would regret it. Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. yeah. And though each of us took great personal risks, none of us regretted them because we made the sacrifice for a noble cause. It wasn't easy, but I did make a difference. I took up the great burden of pulling humanity toward a better nature, and I moved the weight in the direction of justice. Here, here. I don't know yet how history will judge me, whether I'll be the kook in the gyrocopter or the flying foreshadowing of the movement that saved our democracy. Honestly, I thought I was w walking away from this whole thing because it's crazy, and then I thought about being 75 years old and watching the collapse of the country, and thinking that I had an idea that might have arrested the fall, and I didn't do it. When I decided to put on my walking shoes, I didn't know what would happen. I didn't anticipate as much of a wave as I have created, and I am happy for it. It just shows what one person can do. Here, here. Here, here. We are here today to show you through our stories that it is possible to win this battle between light and dark, to make our country reflect the best of what people can be, rather than the worst. We're telling you today that the only thing it takes to win that battle is ordinarily, ordinary citizens like you, like all of us, who refuse, absolutely refuse to give up. You're here. Yep. Here. The fact that you're here means you haven't given up, and that makes you people who carry this message who will carry this message. Because we are tired. We've walked a long road. It's been awfully lonely at times, but we've always believed there would be people like you to relieve us. Heroes like us who will put country first and convenience second. We will always be pulling against the weight of humanity's baser instincts. But if we pull together, we can make this country shine again as a city on a hill, the brightest light of what humanity can accomplish. Who will join us? Come up here and add your strength to ours. We cannot let them steal our country. Come we need join help. us. We need help. Please help us with we the road. We need help. Democracy.